Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. I've made two videos recently testing the security of macOS and Windows against real world attacks. I've got a lot of requests to do the same thing for Linux, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's dig right in. Alright, so the way this is going to work is I have three scripts that I've written that emulate the kind of malicious behavior that you would see from real malware. And this is going to get a little tricky, right? Because, you know, one of the, the only difference between malware and legitimate software is the intent behind it. So you might be wondering, how is a system supposed to detect and prevent this kind of stuff? We'll talk about that more later, but first I want to show you what we've got going on here. So you can see here on my desktop we have the uh, three pieces of malicious code that we're going to test. They're all shell scripts. Uh, we have one that is going to create a reverse shell, and that'll give us remote access to this Ubuntu desktop. Then we have a password stealer. So this is going to try and get the passwords out of Chrome, and save them to a text file for us. And then we have an encryptor. Now this is to emulate what ransomware would do. And let's let's see how Ubuntu fares against these. So first, I want to start with the reverse shell. This is very simple. So basically, this is just defining the IP address it's going to connect to. And then it's defining the port that it's going to listen on. And then it's literally just uh, taking a shell, a bash shell prompt, and sending it over the wire to that remote server. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm just going to open a terminal here. And before, before we execute this, we need to get our server ready. So I'm just going to pull up the server we're connected to. And we're just going to clear that, zoom that in a little bit. All right, so we're just going to use NCAT to listen on the network. And then we'll just execute our remote shell script. And you'll see here that we now have a remote shell, and I can do anything that I might want to do on an Ubuntu system. So you, you might be wondering, you know, why not just use SSH? Well, the thing about this is that you don't need to know the password. You just need to trick someone into running that code. And, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, but you might be wondering, how is Ubuntu supposed to even detect that this is malicious? Because there can be very legitimate use cases for wanting to do something like this. But the fact of the matter is, in real life, what will happen is an attacker will either plant this in an otherwise benign uh, file or piece of software, make it a kind of Trojan, or they would trick you into running this on your computer, giving them remote access. Uh, and again, there are legitimate reasons why you might want to do this, but the, the thing is that this is usually with malicious intent when you do something like this, and the trick really is that there's no antivirus on Ubuntu. There's, there's no malware protection. And to be fair, macOS and Windows also failed this test. What I'm trying to show you is the methods that attackers in real life would use to compromise a system, and as you can see, our first attack it works just fine on Ubuntu. All right, so that's all well and good, but what else have we got? Let me just uh, close this window. So we also have our Chrome password extractor. So I'm excited about this one. So on macOS, we attempted to extract the passwords from Chrome, and it actually failed. On Windows, we were able to extract the passwords from Chrome, and that works no problem at all. If you want to see more details about that, I'll leave a link to those videos in the description down below. Definitely worth a look if you enjoy this one. Uh, so before we execute this script, let me show you how it works. So this is pretty straightforward. It's just defining a couple variables here. So it's saying here's Chrome, here's the login data, here's where it's going to save it. And then it's actually using SQLite 3 and that is connecting to the Chrome database, and then it's going in and it's extracting all of the passwords and usernames from it, and then it extracts the encrypted passwords, and here's, here's where this gets tricky. So you'll see there's nothing in here to decrypt the passwords, 
And that's because I couldn't get it to work. I could not make it so that the script was able to decrypt these passwords, which is perfect. That's exactly what we were hoping to see. And what that means is that Ubuntu does a better job than Windows of keeping your passwords in Chrome secure. So I'm still going to show you what this looks like to run. So we'll just open a new terminal and execute Chrome Pass. And you'll see we have a new file on the desktop here. If we open that up, you will see that in fact I was not able to decrypt the password that was saved in Chrome. It's just gibberish. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't get it to work no matter what I tried. Which, you know, that might be a skill issue. But, you know, the, the thing that we can learn from this is that Ubuntu does a better job of protecting your passwords in Chrome than Windows does, uh, which is a very real attack vector. So I'm really happy to see that this didn't succeed and that we weren't able to do this. All right, and the final thing I have to show you is an encryptor or ransomware. Uh, so what is ransomware? Well, basically it makes all of your files on your computer gibberish and makes it so that you have to pay someone to get the decryption key. I want to show you how this works. So we'll just open that up. And basically we're just going to be encrypting the desktop. And then here it's actually creating a new encryption key. In a real life scenario, the attacker would probably bring their own key rather than generating one on the device. Uh, and then it's using OpenSSL, so it's just making sure that OpenSSL is there. And then this for loop is where it actually goes in and encrypts all of the files. Very simple, okay? And then, uh, yep, here's where the action actually happens. That's where the encryption occurs. And then it gets rid of the original file. And so, that's all there is to it. So, you might be wondering, does this work? Well, we will find out. So, we're just going to run encryptor.sh. And before we do, let me show you this important text file. And as you can see, it has a very important message in it. Hopefully, we don't lose that. Uh, so, we'll close without saving. We'll execute the encryptor. And as you can see, our important text file has been encrypted. So Ubuntu didn't do anything to, of, to prevent ransomware from being able to execute on the system. So, so what can we learn from this? Well, this is a very difficult set of things to protect against. Because for the, the most part, the only difference between software and malware is the intent behind it. There could be legitimate reasons why you'd want to have a reverse shell on your Ubuntu system. There could be legitimate reasons why you might want to encrypt everything on it. And there might even be legitimate reasons why you want to steal your passwords from Chrome, even though that didn't work, which is great. Uh, but my point is, it takes a relatively sophisticated antivirus, anti-malware system to actually prevent this kind of stuff. And, you know, I think that a lot of it comes down to putting in restrictions. So I don't think that it should be possible on Ubuntu to overwrite all of your files. But, you know, that's the thing. Linux is putting you in control, right? It's giving you full control of the system. And that also means it's giving you full access to break something, which is good and bad, right? Uh, but, unfortunately, in these real-life scenarios using modern attack methods and native tools, it's pretty easy for a threat actor to abuse the breadth of access that Ubuntu and Linux gives you on your system to make your life worse. Anyway, so my name is Patrick. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. I try to upload at least once a week. And I hope this was insightful. I hope you learned something. And I had a lot of fun putting this together for you. I hope it was worth your time. And I'll catch you in the next one.